So if we're going to use the quadratic formula to try to solve this equation, we've, that means we've probably gone through the process of trying to factor it and realizing that we can't factor it. If we try the AC method with it, we'd be looking for a pair of numbers which multiply together to give me positive 9 and which add together to give me negative 4. And you can try as hard as you like, but you can't find such a pair of numbers among the integers. So that means that the quadratic formula is once again our only recourse to solving this particular equation. So let me write the quadratic formula back up. x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. All divided by 2a. And then our goal is just to figure out what are the values of a, b, and c that we should plug in. So, all right, what's our value for a in this example? As always, a is the coefficient of x squared. Again, regardless of where that coefficient appears, as long as it's the thing attached to the x squared, it's what we mean by a. Likewise for b, b is the coefficient attached to the first power of x. So that makes b, regardless of where it appears, negative 4. And then c is the value which is just the constant coefficient, regardless of where it appears in the order. That c is going to be 1. So we have our values to plug in, 9, negative 4, and 1. So now it's just a matter of fitting those values into their places, being careful to surround them with parentheses um, every time. So in place of b, I'll put a negative 4 in both of the places where b appears in this equation. In place of a, I'll put a 9 in all the places where a appears in this equation, hugging it with parentheses every time. In place of c, I'll put a 1 in the single place that c appears in this equation. And I'll just put the rest of the scaffolding around it. So we have minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. And just as in our last example, we'll begin simplifying by going underneath this radical, squaring the number negative 4. And when I square the number negative 4 right here, I end up with the same as we did last time, 16. So underneath the radical, I have 16. I've got a square root. There we go. Um, and then I have 4 times 9 times 1, which is 36. Positive 36 this time, so that when I bring that subtraction, this subtraction, when I bring that down, it's 16 minus 36. And what did you get when you did 16 minus 36? Negative 20. Okay, great. So that means that underneath this radical, I have negative 20. Whoops. Try not to be crooked here. Negative 20. Okay. And then out in the front, minus negative 4 is going to give me 4. I've got plus or minus. Downstairs, I have an 18. Okay. So after we do all the arithmetic that's fit to do, this is what it looks like. So what happens next? Okay. That's where you left off. Did anybody else leave off here? Or did anybody go forward after this? I wrote down the same thing earlier. Okay. Okay, so you split this into two, one taking the plus, one taking the minus. Okay, certainly can't argue with that. So one solution is 4 plus the square root of negative 20 over 18. The other solution is 4 minus the square root of negative 20 divided by 18. Okay. And it's at this point when I say that is a totally correct answer to this quadratic, to, to a totally correct solution of this quadratic equation. We could continue forward and uh, do that simplification step that we talked about in the last example, because 20 factors as 2 times 10, which factors as 2 times 5. And it's because it has a pair of repeated factors, it has a pair of 2s, how can I simplify the square root of minus 20? 
what can I do with those twos? Remember, a pair of twos underneath the square root becomes a single two outside the square root. So if I bring that single two outside, then underneath the radical, all I'm going to have left is that five, and then also that negative sign that I had. Right? So I could replace the square root of negative 20 with two times the square root of negative five. And we still have a completely valid solution to this quadratic equation. We're going to stop at this point because, just as a reminder, the big red flag here is that I've got a negative integer, a negative number, underneath the square root sign. And ask a calculator, ask any calculator <laughs> how to do that. So if I pull out a calculator and I ask it for, for the number negative 5, if I hit the square root button, what do you think happens? Yeah. In fact, the Mac calculator is even more illustrative about it. It says, not a number, which as a mathematician offends my sensibilities. The square root of negative 5 is, in fact, a number. It's just not the kind of number that we deal with in our algebra classes on a regular basis. Right? It's not what we call a real number. It's what we call an imaginary number which sounds like it doesn't exist. It very much exists. It's just not part of the number system that we're accustomed to using in algebra. Because no real number can be multiplied by itself and get a negative answer. Imaginary numbers can, but we don't have to worry about imaginary numbers in the scope of, of this semester. You might deal with them some in, in pre-calculus. You might deal with them some in calculus, but probably not much. Um, because the square root of negative 5 is not a real number, What we'll do is we'll take this answer and come up with the conclusion that this equation has no real solution. Right. There's no real number that satisfies this equation, 9x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals 0. Because whatever real number that would be would have to be a combination of 4 18ths plus the square root of negative 5. But the square root of negative 5 is not, in fact, a real number. So in fact, we didn't have to do all that simplifying work that we did over here on the bottom right of the screen in order to conclude there was no real solution. We could have jumped straight from right here as soon as we saw this negative number underneath the radical, underneath the square root. Immediately, that's the giveaway. That at that point, as far as the scope of our course is concerned, we could stop right there and immediately say there's no real solution. But algebraically, we could still simplify it the way that we did. But um, we would still end up in the same place as far as the real number system is concerned, that this equation has no real solution.